Remember to keep everything labeled. Floyd, Floyd you used up the last piece of toilet paper. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 hilarious roommates in movies. Guess who's drunk? I guess Wallace. You guess right. For this list, we are featuring the most comedic individuals that share living spaces with another prominent character on the big screen. If you're into this kind of thing, be sure to also check out our list of the top 10 hilarious roommates on TV as well. You're like the loudest climaxer I've ever heard. It was like the sound of like a 30 year old sprinkler finally going off for the first time. Number 10, Harry Dunn and Lloyd Christmas, Dumb and Dumber. Okay, okay, okay. Ah, right. Their clothing style more resembles a funeral parlor than something a regular person would wear. And their haircuts remind us of collegiate pranks gone wrong. Feels good to mingle with these laid back country folk, don't it, Harry? <laughs> I like it a lot. Sure. Harry and Lloyd aren't especially street smart, nor are they intelligent in the traditional sense, but their enthusiasm for life conquers all. <sighs> you wouldn't necessarily want to bring a pet into their home or anything worth actual money, but they sure are fun to laugh at. What happened? His head fell off. His head fell off? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty old. With sparkling smiles and astonishing self-composure, Harry and Lloyd make every moment on Earth worthwhile, at least for themselves. You're it. You're it. You're it. Quitsies. Any quitsies. You're it. Quitsies. No any quitsies. No startsies. Number nine. Zach Brown and Miriam Miri Linky. Zach and Miri make a porno. Start kissing on three, okay? One, two, three. When the lights turn off, these two roomies turn each other on. With Zach being financially challenged and Miri finding herself attracted to a gay porn star. I apologize in advance if I am out of line here, but are you in gay porn? Guilty as charged. The combination of their troubles leads to a brilliant idea. Amateur porn. We could make a porno. Not the idea I was looking for. Okay, their productions aren't exactly on par with Stanley Kubrick, but Zach and Miri managed to blow our minds with their heartfelt and hilarious sex romps. More tongue. Little less tongue. Passion, desire, bitter cold. These broke ass roomies figuratively started from the bottom. And well, one of them stayed on the bottom, literally. Okay, uh, I'll just be out there. Yeah. That was fun. Number eight Ben Stone, Jason, Jay, Jonah, and Martin knocked up. Me and my roommates have started a, we're starting an internet website. Ah, uh, to be young. The days when you could plan innovative weed sessions, grow an aggressive beard. You know what is not helping us get laid is the shoe bomber Richard Reed over here at our table. <laughs> <laughs> Study the best nude scenes on film. I got a Julianne Redbeard Moore, uh, <laughs> shortcuts, two hours, 17 minutes, bush, no boobs. And proudly boast to your roommates about refined pube grooming. Man, my balls are shaved, my pubes are trimmed, I'm ready to fucking rock this shit. The gang from Knocked Up shows little interest in how the world views them, but they are remarkably focused on how many times Meg Ryan gets naked during In the Cut. In the Cut, 38 minutes in, 48 minutes in, like an hour and 10 minutes, she's like naked that whole fucking movie. This group of California slackers celebrates each other's victories and shows their love with penetrating insults. All they need is a dollar and a dream. Dude, it's the dream. What are we doing standing here, man? Let's go. Come on, follow me. You stay here. Stay here. Why? Because your face looks like a vagina. Number seven, Floyd, True Romance. He's a modern Magellan of stoner characters. While it's safe to say that Floyd doesn't have much going on in life beyond music videos and California weed, his inner dialogue conveys a man with a plan even if he's not exactly sure what it is. You condescend me, man. I'll kill you, man. Mama may have raised Floyd right, because Dick Ritchie's roommate is a well-mannered gentleman able to properly articulate himself. Well, they were here, and they said that they were going to go there. And they went. 
Although Floyd boasts a happy-go-lucky demeanor, he's not the most trustworthy roommate ever seen on film. You're gonna turn right, okay? And then you go and you keep driving and you keep driving. But we'll be damned if he's not hilarious. It's a Floyd world and we're just living in it. <laughs> oh, man. Number six, Ted. Well, here I am. Once upon a time in the 80s, a cuddly teddy bear came to life and became a cynical, foul-mouthed loser. Now, I don't know that you want to go to a drug dealer with a complaint. No, this, I know this guy a long time. I've known him since 9-11. You remember, I was like, oh shit, 9-11, I gotta get high. Well, to his credit, Ted did once have a fling with Nora Jones. And we had awkward, fuzzy sex in the coat room. Actually, you weren't so bad for a guy with no penis. But his attachment to roommate John Bennett left both smoking weed on the couch and contemplating the complexities of life. I don't have to, I'm a f***ing teddy bear. With a hilarious sense of self-awareness, Ted knows how to provide the laughs at home while protecting his teddy bear brand in public. Watch out, ladies, and keep your eyes on Ted at all times. He just may have something dirty in mind. <sighs> Stick your finger in the loop of my tag. <sighs> Number five, Spike, Notting Hill. You daft prick. This Welshman lives with the ultimate gentleman, but his own appearance resembles a man fresh off a hiking expedition. Look at this for a bunch of bananas. Although roommate Will Thacker described him as the stupidest person in the world only doubled, Spike is somewhat of a marketing genius and takes a direct approach with his style, if you can call it that. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, um, perfect. Great. Thanks. Unfortunately for Will, he walks around home with butt crack out and finds sexual pleasure in newspapers like someone living in the 19th century. But that's why we love him. Spike's entirely in his own world. Then I'm gonna tell you a story that'll make your balls shrink to the size of raisins. Number four, Bryn, Bridesmaids. <laughs> While many 20-something women express themselves with a tramp stamp, this British gal rocks a mid-back Mexican drinking worm tattoo that might be a tad infected. It's a Mexican drinking worm. It's like a Native American symbol, okay. meaning wasted. No, Bryn doesn't pay rent, and yes, she bathes with her own brother. But she's got one heck of a smile and such a charming accent. Unfortunately, her mildly depressed roommate, played by Kristen Wiig, doesn't find her creativity or financial freedom appealing. Bryn needs to start paying rent. That's it. She's been here long enough. The three of us live here. It's not fair for me to be paying half. Of course, Bryn reads her diary too. She's all that because she's got it like that. You read my, you read my journal? At first, I did not know that it was your diary. I thought it was a very sad handwritten book. Number three, Mercedes, 22 Jump Street. I'm just saying it's like all fun and games and then you wake up in bed next to a 40-year-old freshman. I'm 19, so... She's a bad mamma jamma and can take a punch. Oh! 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 After Jonah Hill's character shacks up with her freshman roommate, Mercedes unleashes a furious assault of verbal jabs fit for a Comedy Central roast. Oh! F***ing learn how to hit! Oh! But she's not just all talk this one. She tempts unassuming Schmidt into a fist fight while utilizing reverse psychology to frazzle him even more. What were you doing? What am I doing? Why did you try to kiss me? Why did I didn't try and kiss you? Yes, you did. Ooh, you're so weird. She's a straight up boss of the dorm room and defends her territory with ferocity. With a name like Mercedes, you know she's got a license to ill. Is that my bathing suit? <laughs> Just ask, it's polite. Number two, Ed, Shaun of the Dead. I f***ing knew it! This hardly working roommate consistently provides the laughs because he's always drinking hard. Can I get any of you c**ts a drink? As if life wasn't hard enough for Ed and his best friend Sean, a zombie apocalypse takes over the world. But even still, Mr. Ed finds humor in the situation. Any zombies out there? And thankfully for both, hours of video game practice come in handy, thus making Ed a perfect example of Malcolm Gladwell's 10,000 rule. What more do you want? That's how it works, right? He's large and in charge, a slacker crusader of the apocalypse. Where's the ball? What's up, Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Oh, God, it feels like I'm shitting a knife! Oh, 
Okay. Why won't you bitches okay. help me? Oh, just breathe. Okay, I'll take it. Hey, Dustin, show him the wall. I'm just calling it the wall. Forget the wall. Tell him about the meeting I've got set up. First of all, call me Dupree because I'm your teammate. Second of all, so what if you're in the orchestra? So is Catfish Hunter. Let's go. This is cool, man. Yeah. This is like, this is like free therapy. New York State cares. Number one, Jeff Slater, Tootsie. You slut. Look, don't, 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 don't start in with me. He's a philosophical playwright who offers the most poignant drunken rants ever seen on film. I like it when people come up to me the next day or a week later and they say, I saw your play. What happened? As the roommate of a cross-dressing perfectionist actor, there's nothing in the world that Jeff Slater hasn't seen. Not even the deepest of V-neck t-shirts. Oh, since I'm awake, I think I'll go do some writing. Yeah, excuse me. He's poetic in nature and inherently comedic. That is one nutty hospital. You might call him the Plato of hilarious roommates. I'm just afraid that you're gonna burn in hell for us. I don't believe in hell. I believe in unemployment, but I don't believe in hell. Do you think a bra-wearing male roommate would steal the spotlight from Jeff Slater? You must be dreaming. The horizontal lines make me look too hippie, and, and, and it cuts me across the bust. I think we're getting into a weird area here. Do you agree with our list? Totally. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite hilarious roommate in film? Uh. Did you just stick your gum under my coffee table? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Do you think you're at an Arby's right now? You know what? I wish I was at an Arby's. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You guys want to smoke a bowl or? Uh oh.